The wait is finally over. Syracuse basketball might not be in season, but the next best thing, Bayheim's Army in the basketball tournament. That's just around the corner. Coming in July, the roster is officially out. Brad Klein, Matt Bonaparte, we're going to dissect the new roster of 2022 right here on Locked on Syracuse. Let's do it. Our Locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Syracuse right here on your Thursday morning. Brad Klein, Matt Bonaparte, very happy to be with you on Locked On Syracuse. We appreciate you making it your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Bones, the wait is finally over. And I can say with absolute confidence that you and I are the two biggest Bayheim's Army fans on planet Earth. So there's no better two people to break down the roster. We're definitely big fans. Uh, yeah. Listen, this roster that came out today, uh, and let us break it down for you, it is getting more towards a half-and-half half split between yep. Syracuse guys and non-Syracuse guys, which I know is going to put some ninnies in a twist out there on <laughs> social and, and out in the world. But here's the thing. As long as it's more Syracuse guys than not, I think it's totally fine. Okay, so don't get so upset that not everybody playing for this team went to Syracuse. Uh, so of the non-Syracuse guys, go ahead, Brad. Were you going to do it? No, no, the big reason, I'll do it. The big reason that it's okay is because this is the reigning champion we're talking about of the basketball tournament. So, yeah, we'll talk about the roster now. We'll, we'll lay it all out, and then we'll break it down. So first of all, I think it's worth noting that Eric Devendorf is not on the roster this year, which is not a surprise. He was kind of weaning off of the rotation, and last year being his last year, got the championship for him, and it was a great TBT send-off. But he's kind of the Bayheim's Army founding father, or at least one of them, with Kevin Belby. So hats off to him. The Devo, Can't imagine he's not on the bench. And yeah, he's going to be, be around some way, but it was really cool to have him on the roster and on the team and seeing him play at Syracuse again. So his orange jersey days are probably over, but hey, it was really fun while it lasted collegiately and pseudo professionally, too. So let's talk about the roster. OK, so last year they win the championship and they do it on the coattails of some non-Syracuse players, Kiefer Sykes being one of them. He's off to the NBA, so he is off I'll to bigger and better things. Kiefer Sykes will never shot. have to buy a drink <laughs> on Marshall Street ever again. He is a he hit that shot, legend. and he turned around and signed an NBA contract. Like He hit that shot, and then seconds later, Sham Sharanya tweeted that he'd signed yep. with the Pacers. Yep, That's what the TBT yep. does, or just TBT does. Uh, so that is that that is the poster boy for TBT. So the roster now, and you have to be okay with these non-Syracuse players because of Kiefer Sykes. He's not on the roster. DJ Kennedy, DeAndre Kane, two guys who had made their bread and butter earlier in the early seasons of TBT as overseas elite legends, guys who burned Bayheim's army time and time again. Overseas elite did not feel the team last year. That meant that Kennedy and Kane ended up going to play for Bayheim's Army and were pretty successful pieces last year. Now, Kennedy and Kane, you got a St. John's, and you've got a, an Iowa State alum. So it's slash not Marshall. exactly – Slash Marshall. So it's not exactly that nostalgia piece that you're necessarily looking forward to, but these are two guys that are going to help you win games. Yeah, well, DJ Kennedy's like the goat of TBT. Yes. He's a two-time MVP, uh, and even though he wasn't necessarily a superstar for Bayheim's Army last year, that really was Tyrese Rice and Kiefer Sykes, he was still a huge glue guy and a great leader on the team. So this is definitely a guy that you want on your side when you're Bayheim's Army, and it does kind of help that overseas elite didn't play last year obviously he probably would have played for them again uh we don't know whether or not they're going to field the team this year i think the jury's yeah. still kind of out on that i'm going to assume they aren't because if they were we'd probably have heard about it by now um but if not i mean maybe they are but yeah i mean dj kennedy's certainly a very talented player and then deandre kane another guy who can really score the basketball and we saw him do a lot of that last season his college career 
a few years in Marshall where he was solid, and then he transfers to Iowa State for his final collegiate season. He wins a Big 12 title with them, so he's a pretty darn good player too, and he's seen some things in his time. Now we're talking about the 2022 Bayheim's Army roster. We're going to break down every little corner of it, but we're starting with the non-Syracuse players here. Now you've got DeAndre Kane, you've got DJ Kennedy. You round we it know out. those names. We, we know those names. They're they're an unofficial uh, honorary member of the Syracuse basketball program at this point. Now, someone who is absolutely not as of now is Kyle Wilcher. You know, you that name might sound familiar because back in 2016, when Syracuse just somehow soared to the Final Four, they did it on an unbelievable effort to get by Gonzaga, led by DeMontis Sabonis and Kyle Wilcher. He was a big part of that. Dude, I can't believe that Kyle Wilcher is on this team. That's insane. This I, I, guy, I'm going to level. I'm, and it has nothing to, do, nothing to do with Kyle Wilcher personally. It's just as an emotional Syracuse fan. I hate this guy. Hate him. because. <laughs> <laughs> because and honestly, it's the biggest compliment I can give a player is that I hate them. Because he hits a... Seem to have lost Brad here. We've got bad connection on Brad's end. Uh, I think he was talking about how Wilcher was fantastic in that Sweet 16 game. He had over 20 points in that game. And for the season for Gonzaga. Okay, you just cut out totally, Brad, and you're still frozen. He's coming back to Earth. Are you there? Brad Klein. (laughs) Are you there, Brad? Earth to Brad. What is going on here? Are you all right? Oh, it, was, it was frozen. Are you? Are, can you hear me now? I got you now. Okay, we just missed your whole Kyle Wilcher rant. You're going to have to restart Brutal. it. I, I was saying that I don't like Kyle Wilcher, and it's a big compliment to Kyle Wilcher because if you don't like a player, it's because they're really good at basketball and they're not playing for your team. But in 2016, he had some shots, and in his 23-point Sweet 16 performance against Syracuse, that just ripped everyone's heart out on Marshall Street, and now he's going to play for, quote-unquote, Syracuse. So I'm cool with it, but crazy. Yeah, and what I was going to say to add on to that is he was the leading scorer for that Gonzaga team. Like, yep. DeMontis Sabonis is the person people remember because he went on to play in the NBA. Uh, Wilcher got to the NBA, but obviously didn't have the career that Sabonis has had. Uh, this guy's really, really good. I, I think this is underrated how much he's going to help this team. And yes, Brad, a lot of Syracuse fans like yourself absolutely hate him, and I don't really like him all that much either, but he's got a chance to redeem himself in the eyes of SU fans and go out there and help to bring a title back to Bayheim's Army for the second season in a row. He can kind of be that key for Sykes who could score all around the court. Now, the hilarious thing about the Kyle Wilcher ad is that if you had to choose someone from the 2016 team or 2016 game between Syracuse and Gonzaga in the Sweet 16, Kyle Wilcher would be one of my last guesses because there are so many guys on the Syracuse roster that year that you could totally see playing. Tyler Lydon has played. Trevor Cooney has played. Malachi Richards played. has played. Michael Benege has played. That's four guys right there that have already played for Bayheim's Army, not playing, and instead – they got the nemesis who put up 23 points, five rebounds, and four assists in an effort that almost ended their season. 63-60 final, instant classic. I've rewatched this game about 10 times. Underrated that Frank Howard played in that game, and it was so early in his career that they still called him Franklin Howard. That's what it says <laughs> you in know the what? box scores. You know what? Franklin. You know what? Not a bad uh, bring up either. Not a bad mention because Frank Howard is a guy who hasn't played oh, for, for Bayheim's Army. He could totally play for Bayheim's Army. That would be that would be a, a roster move that I don't think people would scoff at. I don't think people would be upset at. And no, he'd be, he was he would be fantastic. I love Frank Howard. I think he was one of, of the more underrated players Syracuse has had. All right, so so if you want to if you want to include Frank Howard, then you have five different guys who are legitimate considerations in our eyes for a Bayheim's Army roster slot, and instead it goes to Kyle Wilcher. Now, it's not a, an attack or anything, an indictment on but Sean But you wouldn't Belty, think the other team's Lightman. star you comes to think Syracuse. It. You wouldn't think it. So it's crazy, And I'm, but I'm all, in, I'm all in on it. You know what? I don't want to carry this Kyle Wilcher hate. It's baggage. I don't, I don't want to anymore. you got to get rid of it, Brad. 
You gotta now, I will say, I will say this. You. Would you feel differently? I, for my answer is yes. Would you feel differently about the Kyle Wilcher ad if Syracuse had lost that game in the Sweet 16? Oh my God, I'd be pissed. Yeah, see, it's, I, I would it's not different. be okay with that. I right would now, not I do be hate him. About it I do all. I do hate him, but it's an if, endearing hate. If Kyle Wilcher <laughs> torched SU in that game and and for uh, a Gonzaga Bulldogs victory, I would not be about it at all whatsoever. I would want him off the team yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got one more name. We're up against a break here. One more name to uh, mention here in the non-Syracuse category of Bayheim's Army. And that's D. Boats, the guy who I don't think many people saw coming, but it'd be an extra body to add some depth here. Another guard, you know, you're kind of having with Wiltshire and Boast, you're kind of replacing Kiefer Sykes and Tyrese Rice. Those were the two guards that, that Bayheim's Army had last year. And now you're bringing in these two guys to kind of slot into those positions. So Boast, another guy who played college basketball for four seasons and was really good. He was all. Uh, he was all SEC 2011-2012. He also an all on the all freshman team, so he played very well in his time for Mississippi State back in the day from 2008 to 2012. He was a known name around the SEC, and this is a guy who's played a long time uh, overseas. So probably another guy that overseas elite would want to scoop up if they were playing this season. Continues to make me think they aren't. Uh, but Bose is another another guy who I think is going to come in and make a difference. He can shoot the ball from three. He can penetrate. I think he's going to be a solid player as well. The two things I like about the D Bose uh, addition is that he's experienced. He's 32, so he's going to be a veteran on the team. You've got other guys that we're going to mention after the break, and they are young, uh, younger at least, and they need a veteran guy like Bose. The other thing is he's not new to the tournament. He played for the Jimmy V team last season, mm, so I didn't know that. Knows- he knows about Elam ending, and he knows about the dynamics of the tournament. So I like this ad. You you have a lot of experience, not only within the professional ranks of basketball, but also experience within the basketball tournament. So there's a lot to like there. But let's take a time out, talk to you a little bit about the Built Bar Mud Pies. Bones, I know it's your favorite. You know how our friends at Built are always just coming out with amazing new flavors? This time, Built has truly outdone themselves with their new mud pie flavor. And Bones is all all over it. you got to try this mud pie as soon as possible. You need to hurry because the mud pie bar and the mud pie puff are only available for a limited time. Bones is the reason. Visit Built.com to taste the deliciousness for yourself. Not convinced? Luckily, we saved the best for last. It's actually good for you. No, really, it's good for you. All Built products are low calories, high protein, low sugar. Mud pie is packed with 16 grams of protein, only 150 calories, 8 grams of sugar, 0 grams of actual mud. It's like your mom baked the most delicious, creamy chocolate mud pie and wrapped it up just for you. Go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Oh, the mud pie, man. They, they know what they're doing. Don't sleep on it. They're smart. they got good marketing. All right. Uh, we've got an important favor to ask you as well, other than to check out the mud pie. That <laughs> still gets me every time. <laughs> we put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On podcast. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. Maybe check out the mud pie too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, you stop! It's you always stop on my mind. Pie. It's so funny. Um, it's so good. <laughs> it won't take very long, and everyone that completes the survey can qualify for a hundred dollar Ticketmaster gift card. Gift card. Go to our take our audience survey lockdownpodcast.com slash survey. Thanks for your help. All right, Brad, let's go. Who is on the team? That went to Syracuse, finally. Yeah, this, is, this is my favorite part of it. So we gave some love to the non-Syracuse guys, but here's the roster throughout, and we're just going to we're gonna tackle them one by one from there. Tyler Ennis, yay. Woo! Christmas, thumbs up. Woo! CJ Fair, Bones is a big yeah. fan, so am I, and it was a bad call against Duke. Andrew White, TBT legend at this point, and maybe my favorite ad, we're going to start here. The excitement, drum roll. Marek Dolajai is back in an orange uniform playing for Bayheim's Army. And this is an ad that I know you and me personally, when we were on campus, when we were watching Dolajai play for Bayheim, for Syracuse, we said, you know what? 
man, he'd be a good TBT player, wouldn't he? Man, he would be good for Bayheim's Army, wouldn't he? And now he's here. Let's go. Kinda, <laughs> gotta love Amp Brad. Now, this is awesome. I mean, this is absolutely exactly what we've all wanted since he kind of stepped on campus. Marek Dolajai is the epitome of the fan favorite at Syracuse. He was never the best player on the floor. You could argue he was the most valuable, but he was never the most talented. Uh, and he, the fans just love him because he's he's got all the hustle in the world. Pick your favorite Marek Dolajai moment, whether it was him taking that Zion. charge against Zion Is or it? him breaking his chip in his tooth in half against <laughs> Georgetown, him running off the court and then Beheim being like, where are you going? Get the heck back out there. <laughs> and him being like, what? I, I, my tooth is gone. And Beheim's like, I don't care. You're Marek Dolajai. And he goes yeah. right back out. I was at that game. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, Marek Dolajai, he is the man. And I think you, me, and everybody else in Syracuse land could not be more pleased that he is joining Bayheim's army for the summer. I can't wait for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Outside of him, though, you have my second favorite, or maybe my actual favorite Syracuse player of all time. It's between him and Marek. CJ Fair, who comes yep. back to this team once again. CJ somehow goes a little bit under the radar when you talk about the great players that played at Syracuse. He was so fantastic. Like the entirety of the time that he was there, whether it was his high flying dunks or his, his shot from three or whatever his dribble move was, he was so much fun to watch the entire time. I love CJ fair with all my heart. I still can't believe he didn't get drafted. I was, I was positive that he would get drafted and he just didn't, but you another know, he guy. Was, who, yeah. He was so talented, Another guy, but like he just Brewster didn't really Academy. have the, I don't know. Brewster Academy guy from Baltimore, and he just kind of climbed up the ranks. And I feel like, you know, in a, in a way, Dolajan Fair have very similar arcs. And it's a bad comp because Fair was always the far more talented player and skilled player than Dolajai, but they were both guys who were not afraid to make the tough play, dive on the floor. And both guys who did not play a tremendous amount at first. Now, Fair didn't start a single game his freshman year. Worked his way up to become a star on some was, really, they're both were really good leaders teams. at the end of their careers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Both forwards. And I, I think they have CJ Fair and Marek Dolajai. And it's maybe a little bit more true for Dolajai because Fair is a little bit older. But they're both everything that is right with college basketball you know guys who i agree just i did agree. it right they were both there for four years and they were parts of good teams they were parts of not unbelievable teams but they were there and they were common denominators of the program for those four years so it's just it's really exciting like those are those are the kinds of players that syracuse fans look forward to watching in the summer yeah, those two guys are fantastic. Uh, and again, dude, watching Marek back <laughs> in an orange jersey, Twitter's going to be on cute, fire, and, and I cannot gonna be wait happy for about it. it. Yeah, he's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah. But other than him, you've got Raheem Christmas, who yes. is probably the last great uh, offensive Syracuse big man. And when I say great, I don't necessarily mean he was as good as John Wallace or Derek Coleman, but the guy scored 17 and a half points per game from the, from the center spot. And I mean, Jesse Edwards could totally do that this year, but it would be, it would still be a big step for him. So Rakeem Christmas is the last, you know, when people say Syracuse hasn't had a great big man since it's always Rakeem Christmas. Yeah. So to see him coming back for Bayheim's army is going to be incredibly exciting. Uh, he also was a great shot blocker, two and a half blocks in his senior season. Yeah, I was, was, was going to really, say, really it's, big part it's of that interesting team. to hear you call him, and I, I know where you're coming from. It's interesting to hear you call him an offensive center, the last good offensive center, because really his bread and butter was defense, was an all ACC yeah, defense. Yeah, it was, for especially for those first three seasons. Black City, yeah, he's really good. And, and that's the other thing. Now, Christmas played, and he was there for four years as well. And Christmas played a lot more than a guy like C.J. Fair, at least immediately, mostly because of his height. I mean, he started in his freshman year. He started 35 of the 37 games. Now, he only played about 12 minutes per, but that had a lot to do with foul trouble as well. Now, he just completely revamped his game in his senior year. He got a little bit better between his freshman, sophomore, sophomore, junior years, and he won most improved player 
in his final season, rightfully so. Now, the reason you remember him as an offensive center is because what he did, he's a center in the ACC, averaged 18 points per game his senior year. And nine rebounds. Unbelievable. Yeah. That, it was see, fantastic. That just does not happen. It doesn't happen. But the so, thing about Rakeem, the reason he, the reason that that's spectacular is because it's not because of the numbers specifically, but it's because he was able to change gears and Beheim was able to go to him and say, okay, we've had CJ fair for the last three seasons and haven't needed you to score. We yeah. don't have that guy anymore. And Trevor Cooney can't be our number one scorer. I need you to score 20 points a game. And he said, all right, I'll do it. And he did. Yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible. Now, so the, the hilarious that dude, thing. man, I'm so happy he's on the team. The hilarious thing about him being on the team is that he solves a problem that both Syracuse and Bayheim's army have had, which is who's the true center. Now, the past couple of years for Bayheim's army, they've been asking Tyler Lydon to be that true man in yeah. the middle. But we all know, and it was true back in 2016 when he was playing Kyle Wilter and Gonzaga, he just not that guy. Now, Syracuse just forced him into the role, and he actually played pretty well considering but that didn't really work sh so well for Bayheim's army. And I know that Kevin Belby was big on getting every little void on a basketball roster filled. Rakeem Christmas is that dude, to use the great words of the great Matt Bonaparte from two minutes ago. He is that dude for not only Syracuse back in the day, but Bayheim's army right now. Like, remember, Dante Green was playing some center, and that wasn't he really, was really a good not fit. good for Bayheim's army. It wasn't good because they were asking him to do things that he didn't want to do, and honestly, it wasn't even that good at doing. And that was the Tyler Lydon situation as well. Now you've got a guy, yeah, he can score. He did his senior year, but his job is to be a shot blocker, shot denier, rim protector, and Rack City's going to do it. That's why he's a great fit. Yeah, I, I think you're totally correct. And with the assortment of scoring guards and forwards that you have on this team, like I said, you can go to Rakeem Christmas and pretty much ask him to do whatever he needs to do, and he's going to go out there and give you 100%. That's why he was able to be so successful in that senior season. He doesn't yeah. really need to score on this team and kind of do in part to the other two guards we haven't talked about. So let's get to them as well. You've got yep. the pit game winner. Tyler Ennis on this team, who, <laughs> to our knowledge, is the first time he's playing for Bayheim's Army, which is yeah, really uh, he exciting. struggled. He had that gruesome injury a couple of years ago, yes. and I think that kept him out of the roster. and And he's a guy that I think a lot of people at, at the beginning of TBT and Bayheim's Army, a lot of people were thinking, "Man, wouldn't it be cool if Tyler Ennis played?" But nah, he's never going to play. And now he's playing. So it's awesome. And, and you're, you're talking about Ennis and Andrew White. That's probably your starting backcourt if you look at the roster right now. And there's nothing wrong with that because Ennis is a playmaker. He's going to get guys open. And White is a shot sinker. And we know that from his single season record at Syracuse for three pointers made. Yeah. Uh, and with Ennis being there, He's got another shot to lead an, an SU team, an SU base team in a tournament because the last time he did it, he absolutely caused me so much pain against Dayton. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I thought you were going to say he, money, but I guess you were a little young to be worrying about the money part. No, I was, uh, I was 13. Um, but Tyler Ennis, he's got another chance to be that guy for Syracuse. That guy was incredible. I mean, it kind of okay. goes a little bit underrated. Like I've said about a couple of these guys now, he was a one and done. He was an incredibly talented player. Uh, and his numbers didn't exactly pop off the page at all times, but he was a leader on that team. And the things he did for Syracuse was exactly what he needed to do. So he was kind of the perfect fit. When you think about guys in the zone, Tyler Ennis is definitely one of them. Yeah, especially especially for Syracuse offensively and defensively, it wasn't fantastic, but he was better than people give him credit for. I think he steals people, a game. No, he was good. He was good. He wasn't as good as we've seen other guards. He wasn't be. Michael Carter Williams, but no, he was no, solid. No, but he wasn't a liability in there. I think people forget how good Tyler Ennis was and is for two reasons. One, the Dayton loss. So Syracuse fans sleep on him and his legacy because of the Dayton loss, and whether that's fair or not, you can make that argument that it, that's fair because you couldn't make it past Day Dayton in the NCAA tournament. That's a bothersome thing, and they 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 limp to the end of the season after an unbelievable start. He lose to Boston College at home, and at the time, Boston College was garbage, right? Um, so that was painful. It was a painful end to an otherwise really strong season. So the Syracuse fans sleep on him. I think the nation 
And if you want to use the international basketball scene too, that's fine. The world is sleeping on Tyler Ennis still because of his gruesome injury from a couple of years ago. And there is a stigma around that. And I think this tournament is an opportunity for Tyler Ennis to reprove himself on national television. Yeah, I think you're totally correct. Uh, and maybe he's a guy that's going after, I mean, he's kind of old at this point, but um, he might be going after a little twilight NBA contract, kind of like Kiefer Sykes, but who, who knows? Um, a little different, but you know what? He's a point guard, and I feel like guys like you that. You can never have enough guards. Floor generals. Age is, is just experience for guys like that. Like, think about, think about guys like, Darren Collison, like Darren Collison, I, of course, better pro than Tyler Ennis. Don't get me wrong, but people are still knocking on his door, trying to get him to play in the NBA again. Oh, he's actually younger they, than I thought he was, too. He's only 27. Oh, my God. Then forget about it. Yeah, it's not that bad, but I, there is always a market for point guards. And if Ennis can prove that he is reliable, not going to turn the ball over and healthy, then there is a spot for him in the NBA. And it starts with the basketball tournament. But Next to him in the starting backcourt, we mentioned Andrew White. That is, to me, maybe the most obvious ad of this roster because what he's done in TBT has been invaluable. Yeah, I think I remember the end of last year. Somebody in the comments correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember him being spectacular last time around. But I think he's a valuable player to have but because he, he could shoot the ball totally. Yes. But at this point, he's kind of a 3 and D guy. I don't think he's going to get many minutes over Kyle Wilcher. I don't I don't know. I, I think I would start him over Wilcher. Obviously, we'll see. It's been a while since anyone. They might the start the well, Syracuse started. guys at first. Maybe. Maybe. I, they're, they're in it to win it, though. That's for sure. I, I think even Andrew wants the type of player that can contribute even when he's not shooting the ball well. Because even if he's not shooting the ball well, he's still a shooter. So you always have to mark him up. And if he's shooting the ball well, now you've got to mark him up doubly as much so it opens up the floor extremely well and that is the inertia of a, of a knockdown shooter like Andrew White so to have him on the team and bring him back it seemed like a no-brainer to me yeah he was a knockout in his one year at Syracuse 112 threes in that season I mean the dude right. just the team didn't make the tournament but the guy was fantastic he was a star um so I you look at the roster yeah no go ahead go ahead I was just going to say, I think he's a valuable player, but I think he's a role player. So we're up against it here. But you look at the roster, and there are some guys like no Leiden, no Cooney, no Richardson, no Battle. There are some guys that I think some Syracuse fans wanted to see. But if you ask me, and Bones, you can correct me if I'm wrong. If you ask Bones, this roster is good. And I expect Bayheim's Army to compete for another TBT title. Absolutely. I think they'll probably be a one seed, 100%. Yes. Um, Yes, they're they look fantastic. I think they're they're in a better position this year going in than I think they were last year to win it all. I agree. Yeah, I think this is I don't think it's crazy to say that this is the best Bayheim's Army roster. No, that's not crazy at all. Yeah, it's not crazy I, think, at all. I think that's 100 percent accurate. And, and there's a new excitement because you get guys who you have that nostalgic connection with, but also guys that you haven't seen play in a very long time, like Andrew White's cool. But on one hand, we've seen him every summer for the past few summers. And on the other, he only played one season. Like you want to see those four year guys like Christmas, like Fair, like Dolajai and getting Ennis back on the floor in an orange jersey. And that is that is exactly what we need over the summer as Syracuse fans. So I'm totally. I'm amped. Now, here's the deal. You're you're going to have more Bayheim's Army coverage as we lead up to the tournament. And Bones and I can't wait. Hopefully we get some people on the podcast to talk about TBT, talk about Bayheim's Army. We are super excited to profile, to preview TBT because we're huge fans. Now, again, keep it locked for coverage on that. We appreciate you making Locked on Syracuse your first listen every day. We encourage you to make NBA Mock Draft, Locked on NBA Mock Draft, your second listen NBA every day because we have 50 insiders and you got to search it right now. Ultimate NBA Mock Draft on the Odyssey Sports and wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey Sports Experts, the draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. Five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. 
Thank you so much, and we'll be back tomorrow to cap off the week.